Before we get started this morning, I wanted to show off a little uh, little set of goodies I got yesterday morning. So this was on Facebook Marketplace, and I've been looking for a set of brooches forever. And the only ones that have come up have either been, you know, close to new price or import junk. So these came up, and I was unable to get there fast enough. So I just paid 60 bucks for this set of Made in USA brooches. And I've got a kind of a, a good assortment, you know, common sizes that I'm gonna use mostly, up to, I guess, 3 eighths is the, yeah, 3 eighths is kind of the wide one. And then it also came with three square brooches. So I've got a Dumont um, half inch, 3 eighths, and quarter inch square brooch. So that'll come in handy, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, 60 bucks for that, that little kit there, I thought um, could not beat that. So normally I just dive right in and we just start figuring things out together. But I did this one off camera to kind of give myself full focus and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. Um, I might still make mistakes today on the second one, but um, anyway, I, I did wanna do this a little bit different than normal. So this got done. Um, Basically had to make the hole for the rod, uh, mill out that pocket on the bottom, drill holes for mounting the bar, and drill through here for a set screw, uh, drilled and counterboard in the rod itself to accept the set screw, and got it all mounted up here. So that was a few hours work, but came out pretty nice. Lines up really, really close to the exact edge of the fence plate. And once you lock it in place, there is no moving it. So that, that was a success. And I think what we'll start with is the same order of operations we went with yesterday, which is to machine our little pocket down here first. So this is just a two flute carbide end mill quarter of an inch. So let's touch off on top. Start off at 25,000 steps of cut, depth of cut and so when we get back to our zero on the DRO, it should be at the front of the material. Which we are, and we're gonna go back to 552. Five, so that'll leave us 10 thousandths to clean up once we're all done. Actually, we're just gonna zero it out back there at 552. So then as I make my cuts inward, I'll just count to zero. And then going out from center, our target is gonna be uh, 377 plus and minus, and that'll give us, or minus and plus, I guess, um, and that'll give us 10 thousandths on each side to, or, so we'll do 367 and then that'll leave us 10 thousandths on either end to clean up when we're finished.
Got our tools all set up here on the mill. Uh, we're gonna do some drilling and tapping and two different sized holes. So we are going in three, 12 and a half. Not that we need to be micro inch precise on stuff like this. Three, 12 and four tenths. And then we're gonna move over to the minus side, 250. Okay, I've got my quill DRO zeroed. So we go down the depth that we want. Bought some new single flute counter sinks. So that is nice to have, nice sharp tools. If I had a good chuck, this would definitely be a situation to do some power tapping. As you can see, this nice sharp tap is a, um, meant for bottoming in a blind hole. And you see the strings of chips coming up out of the hole as opposed to going ahead of the tap down into the, into the hole, which is a recipe for a broken tap. So our next hole is gonna be for the set screw that goes into the rod to hold that in place. And for that, we're gonna to go to 3 16 away from the front edge. So it's 187, 0.187 inches, of course. So everybody's gonna be living nice and close, but that's all right. Okay, that's one and a half. And then we're basically gonna counter drill it. I don't really have the right size counter bore. Um, but yeah, we're gonna counter drill it because the tap isn't, doesn't have enough threads and it's completely pointless to have that many threads in this thing. This is not the right tap, but I don't have the right tap. And this one is coated, which is beneficial. OK, 
Okay, so we'll just leave it, leave it to that depth. And then once the hole is opened up here for the rod, then we'll uh, tap it the rest of the way. I'm sure there's a bunch of chips jammed in there. All right, we got our part back in here, or in here this way. And we centered up on it in this direction, in the X, and then two and an eighth inch up from the bottom. So we're just gonna drill down five eighths of an inch with a three eighths drill. This is just a little stubby. And then we'll um, basically bore it with a three quarter inch end mill. Six two five. Yeah, there's my set screw hole just poking through as expected. So I think we can take that guy out of there. All right, let's finish our threads for the set screw down here. Ta -da. Trying to find kind of the smoothest spot that it goes in under the least tension. Feels pretty good. And what I'll do is mark this. So that when we put a set screw in there, we can get it into the best spot possible for machining our rod here. So line up our little marker marks. It's about where we want it. And when we install it in the machine, we're gonna use a dog point set screw so that this thing really has no, no option of pulling out, but we're just using a cut point set screw now that'll make a little witness mark on the rod and that'll tell us where we need to make our flat and where we need the hole. There we go, you see it wiggling around. So set screw is touching it. Squeeze on that a bit and then take it out. There we go. It's going to be hard to show just because of all the glare, but basically what I've done is just quick and dirty set up uh, V-block on some parallels, and then I've actually got the little set screw I did my witness mark with in the drill chuck, and just trying to line it up with where that mark is on the shaft. There we go. And 
and then we've got a about a hundred and fifty thousandths point on the end of the the uh, dog point set screw. So we're just going to use a hundred and fifty four thousandths drill, which is a number twenty three. be plenty. There we go. Should keep that thing captured in there for good. Getting set up for our bar here to get some radiuses, radii on it so that it will slide down into the pocket that we milled earlier. So we've just got an eighth inch corner rounding end mill to cut that radius. So we'll take the part out and then move our cutter to the back side again. And then we've got our five axis stop set up so that we can just stick this guy back in at the same location. There we go, let's see how it fits. Probably have to do some filing on it just because everything's imperfect. It fits in there pretty nicely. So the only thing that we need to adjust for is this front edge here. I think it's a combination of a little bit of a burr as well as that corner not being 100% cleaned up. So that's not a big deal. We can file that off in just a couple of seconds. So the next thing we need to do is get our holes in here for our number 10 screws to hold it on there. And there's a couple of different ways to do this. I think I'm just gonna go the, a uh, little bit on the sloppy side, but it doesn't actually matter because all we're needing these for is clearance. So I'm just gonna put our part in there and then we'll just put a little baby scribe line. Okay, just enough to see. And then I know that from that scribe line, which is basically, you know, the face of this part, uh, from there, those holes are 5 16 in to their center. So as long as I'm relatively close to that, you know, these screws are a fair bit smaller than the clearance hole they're gonna be going through. And then uh, drill and countersink them, and then we'll be good. So drill through this side and then flip it over and countersink the back, just because of where the mark is. So I used a nice sharp cornered parallel to line up my little scribe mark with this jaw. Unfortunately, my jaws aren't a matched pair, apparently. I'd like to, like to replace them. This vice came off of a Craigslist buy that was $60 and I cleaned it up and painted it, but uh, it's definitely not perfect. So we know that that is zero. Kind of going backwards here, but our zero point is right there oops yeah we're within a couple of thousands i think so we're going to come off of that 
3 sixteenths, which is 312.5 ish. And then quarter inch this way, quarter inch that way. There we go. Counter sunk holes and everything. So I guess the last thing on this one is we need to get this piece of flat material to length and don't have a saw to do it with. Hmm. Let's go ahead and get this guy put together. See how long we want to make our bar. This one I basically just marked it and then just kind of cleaned up most of the mark. I think I left just a little bit on there. So how do we cut that? Well we've got 95% of a saw here, so why don't we take this back apart and then see if we can make a cut. I don't have the right belt on, or uh, the right blade on the machine, but maybe it'll do one cut for us. Let's find out. So don't beat me up too bad about this. I've got the wrong blade on there. There's a few other things with the saw that need to be fine-tuned, but I figure why don't we go ahead and you know, use the saw. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Honest to goodness, that was the first cut. So we've got some, ooh, definitely got some fine tuning to do. Not a very straight cut, but that's okay. Okay, I'm gonna go machine that off to uh, fit nice and then we'll take a look at where we're, where we're at. We're wrapping up on this being totally, totally done. So today's project came out pretty good, I think. We got both of those uh, fixture locks now pretty much complete. I think I need to do a little bit more deburring, uh, get some, I don't know what to do with those stickers. Man, they irritate me. Brand new part coming from the factory and the stickers on crooked. I tried peeling it off just a little bit to see if I could re reposition it and I don't think that's gonna work without ruining it. So obviously it doesn't matter, but it's still just kind of annoying. So um, anyway, taking care of a few things off screen. So I've got this guy, I think as good as it needs to be. Uh, ground it down in a few places so that the counterweight could move and uh, get into its correct position. I ended up actually 
welding up the holes on this bar that connects here and then uh, drilling and reaming them. And then I used some uh, bearing bronze to make some bushings on either side of it just to give it a better fit on that roller. So now that thing's not flopping around quite so much. And then you may notice there's some trays in the bottom, but um, we've got pretty much everything back together. Here's our electrical work. I wanted to use the original switch because I like it. And then we've got some waterproof conduit there. It's not as good as the stuff that was actually on there, but that stuff was also trashed. So I just went with uh, electrical PVC conduit, which is, yeah, it's fine. And then down on the bottom, those are just two baking sheets. They were uh, pretty nasty, um, been in use for about 15 years and went ahead and just wire wheeled them and scotch brighted them. So those will catch some of the chips. That's about where we're at. Got some tidying up to do, our uh, feed cylinder to take care of, and then this thing will be ready to rock and roll. Thanks for watching.